YouTube, what's going on today, guys? We got a very special video for you. This is my, I'm gonna say my first official unboxing video. I do have another unboxing video, but I shot that one vertically and it's terrible and very cringe. Hopefully this one's not cringe, but if you go back and check the first one, I unboxed an Iron Man arc reactor replica. Say that 10 times fast, geez. But in the meantime, I got a new thing to unbox for y'all today. My order just came in last week. I've been holding this back and putting a lot of effort into making this video, so I hope you like it. But what we ended up getting was a brand new Scuf PS5 Reflex Pro controller. I am pumped to show this to you guys. I have been absolutely craving a PS5 Scuf controller for the longest time. It did not make sense for me to get a PS4 Scuf controller because those are not going to work on the PS5 games. And I wanted one that was good for games like Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West but more importantly, Apex Legends and other FPS games that I'm into. Traditionally, I've just been using regular back paddles that just don't cut it for me. I wanted to upgrade and go for something a little bit more official, and now we got it, the PS5 Scuf Reflex Pro. Can't wait to show this to you guys. Really hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to do all those fancy things. Like, comment, subscribe, and as Tim the Tatman would say, be sure to tell somebody you love them. Hope you enjoy this video. And we're finally here. Welcome to the unboxing video, guys. I'm gonna be doing just a voiceover for this one because I did not like how the audio actually turned out when it came from my phone. And I use a professional microphone, so I thought it would just sound a lot better. But what we're looking at today in the unboxing isn't just the Scuf PS5 controller. We are also looking at the player pack that came with it. And starting off, you can see I'm just being very careful opening up the box here with the knife which of course I'm sure I'm not supposed to use, but at the same time, it was just a lot quicker. So being careful as I was, I got the box open and this is just showing like, you know, how the package was shipped and it was essentially of course just shipped in a regular style packaging box. But once I finally got it open here, uh, as you can see, the presentation of the box itself and how it actually looks is very nice. Now, I actually got to finally get the steel gray model. The original one I had ordered was the white model, but after waiting a couple weeks for the white one to come in the mail, I actually got a email stating that the steel gray model was in fact in stock and I quickly canceled the white one and got the steel gray instead since I really love the mixture of the orange colors with the steel gray. Onto the player pack here, the first thing you can see is we did get a nice case that comes with the player pack. Of course, that's for the controller, very hard and sturdy. I'm not entirely certain as to what the case is made out of, but I will definitely use this to transport the controller just for the protection alone. And the first item that we come across inside of the player pack is the joysticks. There is two sets. One of them is concaved and the other one is domed. And one of them is also raised and the other one is regular height. It didn't really make sense to me as to why we would get regular height versions. I would think that they should be like a different height again or I'm not really certain because the controller itself does come with two regular height joysticks already. What I will try out first is my right thumbstick will actually be a raised dome thumbstick and the left one will be a regular height concave one. That's what I've been wanting to try anyways something new for each joystick, whereas before the regular joysticks were simply just two regular sized concave joysticks on both the left and right of your controller. The pair of thumbsticks of course also comes with the instructions showing you how to actually remove the front plate of the controller so that you can actually access the thumbsticks and pop them right out of the controller itself and input the new ones, which we'll go through later. But now onto the second item that comes inside the player pack is the gamer grip. Of course, this is primarily meant for all the sweaty wraiths out there. Yeah, you know who you are. Don't act like you won't be using this. Yeah, I still hate wraith. But at the same time, I personally, I can't see myself using the gamer grip if I'm being completely honest. It might be a nice tool. Maybe I'll try it out just for experimentation one night. But at the same time, my controller did come with the grips built right onto them, which I'll show you shortly here. 
Onto the last item that came inside the Reflex Player Pack is one of the nicest USB cables I've actually ever seen. It is a USB type C cable about 10 or 12 feet long. If you need to know the exact length, just let me know in the comments. As you can see, it's actually gold plated on the ends and the color scheme matches the controller exactly, which I thought was amazing. And now onto the meat of the whole dish here, we got the controller itself, the PS5 Scuf Reflex Pro Edition controller. Scuf has branded three versions of their controller. There's the Scuf Reflex, Scuf Reflex Pro, which we are doing today, as well as the Scuf Reflex FPS. And now just reading you what it says on the back of the box exactly, we have number one. We have four rear remappable paddles allowing for faster reactions and can be configured to 12 functions. Number two, profile switch allows you to save three remapping configurations for different games. Number three, wireless and wired connectivity options for any play style. Wireless is amazing. I am so stoked that this came with wireless. Number four, interchangeable thumbsticks with different shapes and sizes allow for the perfect fit. Number five, performance grip that provides a comfortable non-slip feel for extended gaming sessions. This is only on the pro and FPS versions only. And number six, this one is only for the FPS version, so it doesn't really matter. But if you get the FPS version, the only difference is instead of adaptive triggers, you get the mouse style click triggers, which click like a mouse button, which personally I did not want because I like to enjoy those adaptive triggers in my solo games. But for games that are competitive, like Apex Legends or Fortnite or Call of Duty, I will most definitely be using the regular style triggers instead of the adaptive function because I just feel like that makes the gameplay a lot harder. So that is everything on the outside of the box and now we can dig inside and get an actual preview of the controller itself and go through all the features step by step here while well, we just turn this around for the camera so that you get the first view of it. And right when we open the box we have the protector that is going over the joysticks as we all know I'm sure we've all probably experienced it every controller is susceptible to getting stick drift so they put that protector there to avoid any dust getting in probably during the packing phase and once we pull the controller out i noticed there was a little piece of film here that seems like it was to protect the back of the controller probably for the same reasons that the joysticks were protected just to avoid from any dust getting into the paddles in the back instead now immediately picking up the controller for the first time and holding it in my giant hands like i am right now the very first thing i noticed was how comfortable this grip was it is a very tire tread like grip which i'll get a close-up on here for you soon but Feeling the controller, the size of it actually feels about a little tiny bit smaller than an actual PS5 controller, but a little bit bigger than a, a PS4 controller. So likely the perfect size, because I did feel like the PS5 was a little big and the PS4 a little small. So they actually hit a really good sweet medium spot here, if you ask me. Whereas I thought they were using a shell of the PS5 controller exactly, but it does feel a little bit smaller. I could be wrong. It could just be my hype that I felt overall on checking this thing out. But anyways, as you can see here, we're pulling the joystick back because I keep noticing this hexagonal pattern everywhere. And when I looked closer, the scuff logo is actually found inside the joystick, which was pretty cool along with that hexagonal pattern. We're going to see that pattern all over the place. It was actually on the USB cable too. Another thing that was just there to match this controller and flipping it over. There's that pattern again on the grips and on the back paddles as well. One thing I was pleasantly surprised about with this controller is with the back paddles, you can see that they are actually not as big as they appear pictured in the website. They're quite small, probably like a mouse style button, but for all four paddles and your fingers can actually kind of slide right in between the two buttons on each side and you can hit both of them with one finger. It's pretty sweet in that sense. And here, just a close up, you can see the profile switch button along with each paddle is labeled with P1, 2, 3, and 4. Moving to the top of the controller now, we can look and see that the hexagonal pattern is actually very artistically faded into the top of the triggers, which is also very cool. I also can't stress enough the colors of this controller, the steel gray with the transparent buttons and the steel gray behind it is super cool looking. There's no labels on any of the buttons either, which I thought was nice, except for the home button, of course. Here's an example of the concave and domed joysticks side by side. Those are the two I plan on using. 
which of course for me the left one will be a regular height domed joystick whereas the right one will be a heightened concave joystick and if you look at the instructions here you can actually see it is explaining exactly how to pop off that front panel so that you can pull out the old joysticks and put in the new then put that panel right back on which i will show you in the upcoming demo right here so I decided to use the Astro's Playroom demo that came with the PS5 because this is a good way to actually demo the controller without even playing a game. But before we jump into demoing the actual controller buttons and how it functions, here's how you get the panel off. As you can see, it's very easy. It seems a little brittle though, so you gotta be a little careful, but simply just pop your fingernail underneath the left and right sides. There's one more latch in the very middle on the bottom. And what you do is just unclick those and Pull it out nice and carefully and then to get it back in you can see you actually have to insert those two slats click the middle back in left and right sides very satisfying actually and once it's on there it feels very nice and sturdy and flipping it over to check the back paddle buttons i'm just really testing the clicks here to see how it feels i did have a little bit of audio here where i was trying to actually get the click sounds for you on my phone but the phone wouldn't actually pick up the click noises it clicks and feels just like a mouse so that's all i can tell you really about that and of course don't forget this one does use wireless and wired capabilities you can see here i have it plugged in but for this demo we are going to be going wireless so that we can test out all the features of the controller in the astro playroom demo that came with the playstation 5. first things first we just power on the controller and it is going to tell us to test out the adaptive triggers now again, I did have audio for this originally on my phone, but it just felt better to do a voiceover because the audio wasn't that great coming from the phone itself. So while testing the adaptive triggers, you can definitely feel they have that click feeling like it with the original PS5 controller. It is pretty much spot on with exactly how it feels. And even the triggers themselves will do the vibration just like the PS5 controller. The vibration is actually pretty strong as well. It doesn't feel quite like the haptic feedback you get from the PS5 controller. It instead vibrates a little bit stronger. I'd have to be playing with it for quite a while to test out how the haptic feedback works exactly, if there is any at all. Next, you'll notice the touchpad works exactly as it's supposed to. There's a little bit of lag between the controller and what's being shown on the screen, but this happens with the regular PS5 controller as well. Next up was the motion sensor test, so we could see how the motion sensor works on the controller. And while shifting and shaking around, you can see it has that same little bit of lag like it does when you use the touchpad, but it's no different than the PS5 controller in this sense. So it feels really normal to me. And you don't usually use this function all that much in most video games, I always found anyways. Lastly, one of my favorite features of the PS5 controller is the mute button. This button works with two different headsets that I have, both of which are also wireless. Both headsets also have a mute button on them, but this will override that and mute the headsets for you, depending on the model you actually have. If you'd like to know how much the player pack and controller are in total, you are looking at $39.99 for the player pack, and for the Scuff Reflex Pro Edition, it is going to cost $229.99 totaling at $269.98 plus tax and shipping you're likely looking at about $300 and since I live in Canada it costs more yay anyways I hope you guys like this video it's been awesome I'm really looking forward to making some more of these unboxing videos so if you did enjoy this be sure to like comment subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you think you'll be picking up one of the scuff ps5 controllers I personally can't wait to get more into Apex and can't wait to upload some videos on what that's looking like. Keep an eye out for the review video as well. We will do a full review once I've been playing with this for at least a few weeks, maybe a couple months, okay? That's all for now. We'll catch you guys on the next one.